guys, hope you're well. So, as you know, I like using jam to make homebrew. It makes some really quite tasty homebrew, considering that it's jars of jam you buy in the supermarket. And I came across these. Now these are ginger jam. Oh yes. Now these jars were 75p from B&M and I picked up two because I want to make some ginger beer. Now, um, this should be pretty good. I mean, it is all sugar and I prefer to use honey because it leaves a bit of residual sweetness so you don't have to back sweeten quite as heavily. But uh, for 75p a jar, I'm not gonna argue. So, two jars of jam. Uh, each one contains around 60 grams of sugar. That's 120 grams, which is about 7% potential alcohol. Now, because I have them, I'm gonna be adding some lemon to it because lemons are cool, they go really well with ginger and uh, I like that citrus twang. Optional, but you know, you should go for it. And because I was rummaging through my spice cupboard, because I, I fancy trying something a bit like Krabby's ginger ale or ginger beer, you know, whatever you wanna call it. I've also got some nutmeg. Ooh, some ground nutmeg because uh, I've got the whole ones, but I don't have a greater. I still haven't found it. Goblins. I also have some cinnamon. Oh yes, adds that little bit of extra spice, a bit of extra depth. I have some star anise, because uh, it just smells so good. And I've got some cardamom pods, because uh, I think this will go rather nice to try and make a kind of Krabby's clone. It's slightly different. So because we are making this with jam, it contains pectin, so we're gonna be using some pectolase to stop it from making alcoholic jelly. Uh, I always get asked, do I have to use pectolase if you're using jam? Yes. Really, really yes. Um, I made some a while back and I made it rather strong. Not this, just a jam wine when I first started. And uh, I didn't remove the pectin, and I boiled it and did all the stuff. And I made alcoholic jelly, which was very tasty, but not really what we're after. So with that being said, let's, uh, let's make some ginger beer from jam. So nothing needs to be sterilized currently because we're gonna be using heat, it just needs to be clean. So I've boiled my kettle, there is about two liters in there, we know how accurate that is. And uh, first things first. Let's dump the ginger in the pan. Ugh. Oh, that smells good. It smells fiery. Mm. I'm glad I bought an extra jar so I could eat it. So, uh, oh, that looks good. <laughs> oh. I like ginger. Ginger is my friend. There we go, both jars done. Looking good. This stuff is kind of gloopy. Uh, it smells fantastic. It actually smells kind of fiery, which I like. So I've added a little bit of water in here because you know we don't want to waste any of this jam. It's not from the kettle because I, yeah, it's a little bit hot still. Get all the jam essence out. Oh, it does smell fiery, which is good. So, oh, I've got a bit of jam. That's gonna be nice. Mm. I like it. So, let's add in the boiling water and uh, let's start simmering this bad boy. Give it a stir and uh, let's switch it on. Oh, it smells like a cross between um, sort of stem ginger and fresh ginger, which I like. So that's always good. So we've got to prepare our spices. It's going a little nutty, which is fair enough. Ah, so I have 
beautiful star anise. And I'm only going to add in uh, half of a star anise because I'm going to be brewing it in a bucket. Uh, if you're not, you could probably add a bit more and then strain it out if you're using a demijohn. Bits equals bucket. And uh, you know, that's just how it goes. So, oh, cardamom pod. Just one. It is surprising how strong cardamom is. So I'm just going to give it a little... Uh, Okay, I'll just throw it on the floor. So just give it a little crush and add in my cardamom pod. As you do. Nutmeg, ooh, very nice. Oh, nutmeg is one of those things that just go well with everything. So I'm gonna add in half a teaspoon. And, uh, oh, fiery. It smells like the, uh, cinnamon chewing gum. I'm going to add in a full teaspoon of that bad boy. I, I like cinnamon. All right, let's uh, let this come up to temperature and I'm going to put the lids on properly because uh, that's not how it goes. So we're at the 10 minute mark and uh, in goes my lemons into the boil. Oh yes. So I just stripped them with a knife because you know, the grate has disappeared. I'm not bitter about that. So in they go for the last five minutes. And it smells really good. Oh, now it smells even better. It's really lemony. It's got hints of ginger, which smell like stem ginger, which is my favorite type of ginger. It's got the cinnamon. Still not getting the star anise or the cardamom. but I can smell a bit of a nutmeg. Ooh, that's good. So there we go, since it's looking pretty. So at this point, in the next five minutes, I'm gonna go rinse out my bucket, my brew bucket, because uh, that's what I'm gonna be using. I sterilized it using bleach and washing up liquid. Ooh, just destroying stuff. So uh, it should all work out rather nicely, almost like I timed it. So the 15 minutes is up and uh, I accidentally dropped my spatula inside there so that's already sterilized. Uh, I don't want to touch it so off it goes, looking good and it smells pretty damn amazing, I will say that. So I've cleared things away, I've refilled my kettle using cold water. My side has been sterilized, the hydrometer has been sterilized and my brew bucket has been sterilized. Um, I did get asked, well sort of told the thing about the brew bucket because this was what we used for brewing the hipster chips and it was used in lacto fermentation and they were suggesting that maybe I should use this just for doing lacto fermentation but this particular bucket uh, has been boiled because it can take a, a good scorch with boiling water and it's been sterilized using bleach I would be slightly worried and probably wouldn't use it if I was using a sanitizer because, you know, a sanitizer and a sterilizer, yeah, similar, but I nuke it, so it should be perfectly fine. There we go. So I would like to point out if you are using a demijohn to make this instead of a brew bucket, um, leave this to cool and give it some steeping time. The more time you steep it, the flavors infuse because if you're using a demijohn, you don't want it to puke its little heart out. So, brew bucket. It brews with all the stuff inside and it should be good. So, got my two liters, approximately, of cold water. Add this in. I think that's slightly less than two liters. It lied to me. Anyway, close enough. And now, in goes beautiful smelling liquid you get to see it I mean it looks very nice indeed hopefully that doesn't there we go I can finally take this bit out sterile oh it's smelling good so I'm gonna give this a rinse out with some cold water and top this up All right so get the last drop in here oh, 
I mean, it smells really good. It's got an interesting color to it. That's because of all the things we added in there, apart from the ginger. It is still a little bit warm, very slightly too warm to uh, add the yeast to. It's up in the 30s. So I'm going to leave this for about 20 minutes and we'll be right back. So I've left it for about half an hour. It's still warm, but it's cold in here, so it is actually cooler than it looks. Oh yeah, looking good. And it smells even better now. So I have already taken out a little bit of a hydrometer test just to see if we were about right. And it is sitting actually fairly accurate. It is 1.0 or eight, so it's about seven and a half percent, which we can live with pretty close. So we've got a couple of things to add in as we do. So first off, we need some pectolase because we want to break down the pectin in there. We don't really want any alcoholic jelly and uh, well, less of a hangover, the less pectin that's in there. So just pull out a teaspoon, sprinkle it in, looking good. yeast nutrient because well we want a good solid clean ferment so just roughly a teaspoon of that now we'll give it a stir to make sure it's all dissolved this was sterilized it was sitting in the uh, boiling solution There we go. That should be good enough. Now the yeast I'm going to be using is just universal wine yeast. There is no point trying to uh, use a beer yeast or anything like that because it's just sugar inside here. So no matter what yeast we're going to use, it's going to ferment to dryness unless we used that yeast. So I'm just going to sprinkle just a little bit on the surface and that's just done. We have this beautiful, it smells really good. I am hoping that this tastes as good as it smells. So just close it on three sides. That's as done. We now have, in theory, ginger beer, spiced ginger beer made from jam. Should be pretty good. So I hope you enjoyed this video, guys. Don't forget to check out some of the other ones and well, subscribe if you feel like it. Carry on homebrewing. See ya.